we have done a lot of justice when you talked about carbohydrate metabolism and fat metabolism we have not taken chance our time to talk about protein metabolism and today's video is talking about metabolism of protein have you ever wondered when you eat that meat where does it go to what does it do and what are the metabolites and uh, of this meat are they toxic if they are toxic what happens to this welcome to this video where we talk about protein metabolism my name is dr lewis karibu sana now protein metabolism proteins play a very huge role in our bodies basically a whole of our body is actually made up of proteins a lot of it is made up of proteins including a lot of things let me show you this the functions of protein number one we have the structural proteins that are actually uh in the bones in the skin and all that collagen elastin and keratin including the nails we have proteins that are actually called contractile proteins that are in the muscle they help in contraction of muscles and movement and all that the actin and myosin okay and then we have transport proteins these are basically in the blood plasma and one of it is actually hemoglobin and then we have hormones the amino acid hormones that regulate sleep mood and all that when you're depressed i tell you to eat more meat why because i need you to synthesize a lot of hormones uh, from the amino acids that are coming from those meats i also tell you to fast because i want you to fix your gut so that you can be able to absorb optimum amounts of amino acids from that meat and also be able to concentrate stomach acid so that you can tear down the larger proteins of this uh, the larger molecules of this protein into polypeptides and amino acids that are easy to absorb across membranes we also have the enzymes which are basically playing at a catalytic role in uh, or in biological functions in the body and then we have antibodies which are playing a role in your immune system and then we have the receptors for drugs for chemicals for hormones all over the body we function through receptors that are on cells or on muscles and all that then you have ion channels that regulate the influx and efflux of ions into and out of the cell okay so those are basically uh, the broader uh, classification of roles of proteins however where do proteins come from they come from structural stuff called the amino acids so a bigger protein that meat that you're seeing is actually a combination of amino acids that have come together to form uh, the larger protein understand we have 20 amino acids that are used to form these proteins and they are different amino acids we have 20 of them for the sake of formation of proteins but however understand that 50 percent of these amino acids are essential amino acids so almost 50 percent of the 20 amino acids basically 10 plus of the amino acids that you have are essential the word essential means the body cannot synthesize them so they have to come in through diets that tells you 50 percent of the protein that you're actually getting the amino acid you're getting from the protein has to come through diets that's the reason why i tell you please consume enough eggs please consume the meats both organ meats and the other meats red and white okay because we only know of amino acids you don't absorb red meat you absorb amino acids okay you don't absorb white meat you absorb amino acids consume the fish and the seafoods consume chicken plus the skin you need all these for different functions in the body and now that you know they are bringing in a lot of protein to supplement what you have already in the system and the body cannot make it so you need to eat a lot of animal proteins now there's this debate about animal and plant-based proteins always eat animal proteins because the animal proteins come with all the essential amino acids that you really need for your body they actually resemble the protein that are in the body so which means they have a full profile of amino acids as compared to their plant-based proteins which lack some of these amino acids and that means you'll have to combine multiple uh, plant proteins so that you can actually <laughs> achieve the goals that can be achieved by eating eggs or meat so always go for the animal proteins and you know plant proteins they come with uh, a lot of things called phytoestrogens which are very dangerous to uh, uh, men they can turn you into a woman because they raise the amount of estrogen and also they come with anti-nutrients the reason why you get bloating when you consume these plant-based proteins is because they don't want to be consumed they have to survive and their survival in instincts means they load their seeds with anti-nutrients that block you from eating it so that experience that you get of bloating and passing gas is intentional to make you have a very bad experience with them so that you don't eat them again so this are what you should consume as your protein sources to get the amino acids now amino acids are the structural or the building blocks for protein this is exactly how they occur so we have i've taken two of them the valine and the and the glycine and i've taken them to, to actually show you how they combine to form proteins so there is a bond that is used to combine one amino acids to the other 
this bond here is called the peptide bond okay so this is the peptide bond the one that actually combines multiple amino acids to fold them to form a mass of protein that you see as red meat now this is what is absorbed into the system because we don't absorb red meat we absorb amino acids once we absorb amino acids because remember the protein that you eat let's say you've eaten red meat or white meat chicken or fish or uh, red meat what happens is the acid in the stomach is very important so for you to actually have uh, essential digestion and absorption of protein you must have a strong acid in the stomach this could be one of the reasons why you're busy being, uh, being told by those who advocate for vegetarian diets that meat will stay in your stomach for eight hours plus that is not true the truth is we eat a lot of things that neutralize our stomach hcl the acid in the stomach and now we are unable to digest protein but because we don't want to blame or drop those unhealthy foods that destroy the acid in the stomach we will blame it on protein because that's how we are we constantly blame it on protein, yet the problem is not the protein, it's the weakness of the acid in the stomach. And some of the things that weaken these are the antacids that you're always having in the stomach, in your house. So you take that antacid, you neutralize this acid, you are unable to digest protein. Because the role of this hydrochloric acid is to tear down the larger molecules of protein to release the polypeptides. Which will be now acted upon by enzymes from the pancreas to actually give you the amino acids that you absorb. So if you have a messed up stomach acid, of course, the process of digestion of protein is already messed up. Okay, and that should be taken note. So start fasting to concentrate the stomach acid. Uh, apple cider vinegar uh, is very good when you're fasting. You can take apple cider vinegar in water, dilute it to actually concentrate stomach acid. Okay, so those are the things that you can actually do. And even uh, hydrating with water and salt, they are very important for concentrating the stomach acid. Once you do that, now you eat your protein, you convert it to... Uh, polypeptides and these polypeptides are acted upon by pepsin, trypsin and chymotrypsin. These are basically pancreatic enzymes. So this happens in the small intestine. This is in the stomach. Now we head to the small intestine where this happens. And once this happens, we have our amino acids. Oh, hail glory. These amino acids are now taken into the bloodstream and in the bloodstream, they are ferried all the way to the liver. Now the liver will decide which amino acid will be used to go ahead and form this because we'll send it into uh, different uh, uh, tissues and organs in the body to be used for different functions the body the seven or eight functions that i just mentioned here now so if it's in the in the bone the liver sends a certain type of amino acids into the bone to be used to make collagen elastin and keratin and all that for the for the muscle is acting in myosin and hemoglobin in the blood plasma okay so that goes there now excess of this amino acid so we've actually taken in a lot of meat and all that and we've, uh, uh, we've, we've taken in a lot of amino acids. They have been used to form these uh, functions or to do these functions. Excess of it, the body does not know how to store protein. So protein is never stored in the body. But the body does not want to waste these proteins. What does it do? It simply converts excess of the amino acids to glucose. Underline the word glucose. This process is you getting glucose from protein, not from carbohydrates. Because when you break down a carbohydrate, you get glucose. And then pyruvate, and that pyruvate is pumped into the, uh, as acetyl CoA is pumped into the Krebs cycle to give you energy or ATP. But this channel, we can get glucose from protein. This is a channel called gluconeogenesis. You can synthesize glucose from sources that are not carbohydrates. So stop telling us that carbohydrates are the only energy giving foods because excess amino acids that you consume in your system, you can easily convert them to glucose. Even muscle proteins can be converted to glucose and then this glucose will be converted to acetyl CoA and I hope you can remember the Krebs cycle when you convert all these proteins, carbohydrates and fatty acids into acetyl CoA this is the raw material that is actually used to form energy uh, in the mitochondria okay so we use glucose to form ATP and that you get your energy for activity or we can convert excess amino acids into free or the fatty acids and these fatty acids will be converted again to acetyl CoA to give you a raw material for the Krebs cycle to synthesize energy but let's say you're eating ketone uh, the keto diet keto diet is high in protein high in fats okay and low in carbs or zero carbs so keto diets are the ones that will give you this process they give you fatty acid that are going to be broken down uh, to give you ketone bodies and ketone bodies are the best energy sources for your brain for your cells they are all so anti-inflammatory but the beauty of the ketone bodies they cannot be utilized by other cells like cancer cells so they start suppressing the cancer cells because they don't have energy to multiply. And that's why the ketotic stage, the ketosis, ketogenesis is very important in your survival. When you're fasting, you're not taking in any glucose. You're basically relying on the burning of fats 
to get uh, ketone bodies for energy, okay? And that's not ketoacidosis. That's just ketosis or ketogenesis. So proteins can be converted into fatty acids and they can be used to form energy. But you see, when we're not having uh, any requirements for energy, we simply convert them into fatty acids and we store them into the fat cells. That means eating lean meat can actually start making you fat. Even the glucose, we don't need it for any energy because we are, we, we are sedentary and we're eating so much of the protein. So what do we do? We convert glucose to fat and we store it, we store it into the fat cells. Now you start adding weight. Now you see how meat causes you weight gain. Lean meat. The reason why I tell you to eat fatty meat is because fatty meats will stop you from overeating the protein. Fatty meats will also come in with the cholesterol and fatty meats will help you absorb the fat-soluble vitamins from the vegetables. So when you don't overconsume the um, amino acids, of course, you will simply use these for these functions and the slightest amount that will be excess will be used uh, to provide energy for your functioning. And that is protein metabolism. Okay, once you've understood this channel, you will know if you binge yourself with proteins, <laughs> you will end up either being fat or you'll end up providing a lot of energy. If you're not using it, it'll be converted to fat and stored in the fat cells. That's a problem. Now, on the kidney function tests, some of you will see creatinine and they will see urea. And then you start asking, where does this urea and this creatinine come from? I'm here to explain that to you. So, urea versus creatinine. These are the waste products of protein metabolism. So once you've broken down protein, you utilize it. The waste product of this metabolism is either urea or creatinine. Okay? So look at it this way. These are indicators of a well-functioning kidney or sometimes even the liver. So if you have high urea in the system or you have high creatinine in the system, that tells you you are not excreting these two from the system. And when you're not excreting them, they start building up in the blood. They can be a serious problem. So look at it this way. Urea is the protein that you eat. And creatinine is the protein that you are. Allow me to explain that. So urea is a metabolite or a waste uh, product of the metabolism of the protein that you're eating. Look at it this way. You've eaten meats or a lot of eggs. Some of these eggs will be absorbed as amino acids or the meats. But some of this protein will end up into the large intestines where we have gut microorganisms, okay? For people who have protein in digestion, a lot of the protein that you're being you're not digesting will end up getting into the large intestines because you're not able to digest it. Because remember, for it to be broken down to amino acids, it has to come into the small intestines as polypeptides. But you have a weak stomach acid. Now you are unable to digest protein into smaller polypeptides. So a lot of it is going all the way to the large intestines where it's going to encounter gut microorganism, the normal flora. This normal flora will feed on that protein and once they feed on that protein, they produce uh, uh, ammonia. Okay, so you eat protein, you convert it to amino acids or some of this protein goes directly into the colon and in the colon, it is converted to ammonia by the gut microorganisms after feeding on it. Ammonia is highly toxic to the system. Sometimes you might end up passing gas that smells so bad. But ammonia is highly toxic to the system and it's very, very, uh, it flows, it goes past the membranes of the large intestines into the bloodstream. Now when it gets into the bloodstream, in the blood it starts to raise the amount of ammonia in the system. When ammonia is in blood, remember it's toxic, it will actually cause you a lot of problems, including psychotic symptoms. So some people who have high ammonia in the system, they experience psychotic sim uh, symptoms and that's called hepatic encephalopathy. So you'll get a problem of the liver that causing you to not uh, detoxify ammonia. Now ammonia builds up in blood. Once it builds up in blood, it causes you brain damage and you start experiencing psychotic symptoms. So ammonia is very toxic. Now, this ammonia in blood has to be detoxified. And what does detoxification in the system? It is the liver. So the ammonia now is carried all the way to the liver for detoxification. And the product that comes from detoxification of ammonia is what we call urea. Now this urea is excreted through the kidneys because now it is sent back into the bloodstream and circulates in the bloodstream because it's less toxic than ammonia. Now it ends up in the kidney during the filtration of the blood and when it ends up in the kidney, it's now excreted through urine. So urea, urine excretion. That is number one. So when you see a high amount of urea in the system, that is an indicator of kidney problems. And guess what? Kidney problems about are sugar problems. So nephropathy. Kidney damage is a sugar problem. Sometimes chemicals and toxins, sometimes those skin products that you apply on your skin are to lighten your skin. The ones that have mercury, the lead poisoning, all that. And 
those people who are consuming GMO foods that come with glyphosate that destroy the kidneys, also some antibiotics like imipenem, the vancomycins, they come in and destroy, even gentamicin, okay, they come in and destroy the kidneys. Now you are unable to excrete excess urea in the system. Now it starts to build up and that's an indicator of a kidney failure. That is one. So that is the protein that you're eating. How about the protein that you are, the creatinine? We are made up of proteins and in the muscles we have a lot of proteins. So when you're seriously working out or when you're fasting, there's a lot of turnover of these proteins. Some of the old proteins are converted to amino acids and these amino acids are combined with dietary amino acids to form uh, new pro uh, structural proteins for muscle repair. So they are recycled all over. But when you're doing a lot of turnover of proteins in the muscles, you produce something called creatine. Creatine, not creatinine. Now creatinine is a, a, a waste product of breakdown of muscle protein and the creatine. So you've seen uh, these gym uh, uh, guys marketing to you creatine powders, okay? And they tell you, oh, this has been well studied and all that. Creatine starts to build up in the muscles and that's how we end up having the muscle uh, hypertrophy, the muscle growth. However, excess of that creatine, so please get creatine from meats, from eggs and from the animal proteins. Do not prefer taking it from a supplement. So excess of this, it builds up in the muscles and excess of it is converted to creatinine. Now creatinine is the waste product of metabolism of muscle protein which gives you creatine and then creatine is converted to creatinine. Now creatinine circulates into the bloodstream and then is, is excreted through the, the kidneys. So now this is the, uh, the waste product of metabolism of muscle and body proteins. But this is the waste product of metabolism of dietary protein. Now I hope you understand the difference, okay? So that is what you see. Because when you ask even a doctor, what is this creatine and what is this urea? They are like, oh, don't worry. Those are just indicators of the kidney function test, the renal function test. You're like, okay, but I know that. But what are they? Now you understand that this is the waste product of breakdown of dietary protein and creatine 9 is the waste product of breakdown of creatine which is coming from the protein turnover in the muscles, which is the protein that we are, okay? Good, so this is basically the breakdown of the protein, the metabolism of protein, and how they're used in the body. And I hope you've actually learned something new from this.